Good evening, everyone, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm so pleased to be here um, to present our in-game uh, voice chat solution from Tencent. Um, for the people who don't know Tencent, um, so Tencent is uh, one of the two biggest internet companies in China. Um, Tencent started its business like 20 years ago. Um, Tencent today has like three major parts of the business, uh, social apps and the uh, game are two uh, major two of them. And uh, um, these are the two uh, most popular social apps um, running from Tencent. The first one is we call it QQ. It's here, it's called a QQ. Um, and the second one is, is WeChat. So QQ uh, is primarily for the young people. And the WeChat is basically for everyone in China. Every Chinese has a WeChat account to connect with their friends, their families every day. So both, um, both apps um, have very solid audio and video communication uh, capabilities uh, starting from 20 years ago. So um, that this one, is, uh, it has the audio and the video um, um, chat, uh, audio and the video conferencing capabilities. So we have been running basically this real-time communication uh, service for almost 20 years, starting from 2000. That was still the time using the uh, uh, very, very, very slow uh, PSTN connectivity with like 16 or 32 kbps. And, uh, um, and then about two or three years ago, two and a half years ago, uh, we feel uh, it's about the time we bring um, that social, uh, social experience or doing a video real-time communication experience from the social apps to the gaming world. Because we believe that the uh, um, in the, in the virtual the virtual world of games, if we can bring the the voice chat uh, into that experience to add the element of the uh, realism and the social to that, it could make the gaming experience uh, more immersive, uh, more vivid um, to the real to the real world. And then um, so. Um, um, as I said, uh, then one, as Simon just uh, just introduced, um, so actually we started that GME business from two years ago. We started the pilot that in China first, um, and, uh, and one year ago um, we, we feel that the, our GME standalone solution cannot really make that immersive experience the best for the game developers and the game players. So we start to be in touch with with, with Audio Kinetic. The Wise is a, is kind of the best uh, sound engine in the gaming world. We start to collaborate with Audio Kinetic. We, dis, we feel it's best to provide a joint solution, joint Audio Kinetic and Wise solution. Uh, sorry, joint GME and AK solution to the game developers, so they can easily integrate our in-game voice. Um, experience to their games. And it also helps the game players to have a more immersive experience. They can take advantage of the DSP effects from the uh, WISE. They can use um, the, the special sound experience provided also by the WISE engine. So in the voice chat, they can also have like the real-time experience you have today, um, which could be like team-based. Because you in the real world, you could have different mechanisms to connect with your friends. It could be like the radio connection, uh, which is like team-based. You talk with your friends without any uh, limitation of the distance. It could also be uh, like proximity-based, and so which uh, means that you um, you deliver your voice based on the distance you have. So uh, adding all these different communication mechanisms through our collaboration with 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 Wise could really make your game more colorful, more immersive. So that's the uh, the GME usage today. Um, it serves primarily the China, uh, Japan, and the Korea customers. We have more than 1,000 um, game players using it, and every second we have more than 1,000 like channels. Channels, I mean here, I mean the chatting rooms people are using um, to, to communicate with, with each other. And the in-game, actually, uh, the in-game uh, voice chat uh, service could serve a very wide range of game scenarios. In particular, for the uh, MMORPGs, massive uh, multiplayer online role-play games. Um, okay, um, so that's the roadmap uh, we have for our joint solution. Uh, we are here, pretty here today. That's uh, basically we offer the team-based voice chat. Team-based means the uh, you form a team. Uh, it could be small or large, and the communication with different team members uh, is independent of the distance or the physical in, you know, physical distance you have. And also, we offer other. Uh, um, uh, features like high quality audio, because we, we hear from the game developers, they may want to uh, stream uh, more than voice quality, the high, high quality audio uh, to, the, to, to others. And then we have also, uh, as I just said, the proximity based uh, voice chat experience. Um, it depends on how you are close with your, uh, with your team members, um, so they can hear different levels of the sound. 
Um, we also, uh, also uh, offer other interesting features like better word filtering, uh, which is based on the voice message. Uh, so actually, this, this, this functionalities we already have in our standalone GME solution, but for the journey solution, we are going to roll out this uh, feature step by step. Um, so voice message first will be rolled out pretty soon. Um, one barrier of the voice message is about the GDPR compliant. So we are working with our compliance team um, to, to find the solution. So better word filtering is based on the voice chat, uh, voice, voice message, because we, uh, we hear from some uh, government, from the regulations, that um, some better words should be filtered out if you send a message to others. Um, and we also offer other uh, voice-based services, uh, basically like uh, ASR voice recognition, because if you send the voice message to others, um, uh, the people on the other end of the side may not be able to hear it, but he would like to see that the voice message is through the ASR, uh, uh, through the voice recognition techniques. And we also offer the text-to-speech, uh, and also the um, translation is also another functionality we offer. Um, and the voice conversion. Voice conversion is a, fun, um, is, 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 is a function you can transform your voice to another person. Um, there's like an uh, idol, you know, targeted person in the games, so you can make your voice sound like, like, like him or her. So um, you may ask why we have, uh, we, we, we intend that we actually GME team is pretty small. Uh, we, we, the reason we can offer uh, like a Swiss Army knife of voice services are based on the back or Tencent Cloud backend. So Tencent Cloud um, is the second largest uh, cloud provider in, in China, but it offers a global business. Um, so we, we, work, we work with a, a Tencent Cloud backend. Um, it has like the, a whole spectrum of, uh, of all these uh, voice-based functionalities. So in our GME, uh, we encapsulate all these voice services and expose these functionalities through a, a wise API to all the game developers. So in your game design, if you need any voice-related services, we will be able to offer it. We can provide through a very simple uh, GME and a wise API to meet your demands. And we, uh, and, and we also offer the cross-platform uh, support for our solution. Uh, we, already have, uh, we already have the, uh, the solution on basically on the PC, on the, on the Mac. Even there are very few developers are really using, uh, players are using the Mac. But we offer the, uh, uh, our, our, our service on the PC, on the Mac, on the iOS, uh, on, the, on, the, on the Android, because there are many mobile players um, in Asia. And we also offer the, the, the console support for uh, PlayStation, Xbox, and the Switch. They are on, they are on the way. So that's a, that's a roadmap um, introduction. And uh, um, as I just said, it takes us like 20 years to build uh, the real-time communication experience. So um, our entire uh, uh, speech quality, um, speech quality methodologies and the systems um, are based on the, uh, are based on the inter international standards. We started from the ITU standard 132 and 130, 131 and 132. Uh, 131 and 132 specify the acoustic characteristics uh, characteristics of the telephony system. Um, and then um, we're starting from just a single, uh, the, the, the device uh, acoustic part. We move forward to the, uh, to the, uh, to the ETC standards, uh, 739 and 740. 739 and 740 specified uh, the the end to end it takes it takes a perspective from the uh, from a QS uh, a uh, as perceived by the users from that perspective to look at the end to end um, the sound experience so it takes the net in particular it takes uh, the network impairments into consideration when they assess the, co the audio quality uh, when we deliver really the, the voice through the network you know there are some network um, conditions you have to consider like the packet loss like network jitter. Jitter means the delay variations, and also the, uh, the delay. Uh, if we are delivering sound through across different countries, the delay has to be considered. So the, uh, the ITU standard, uh, ETC standard 739 and 740, all takes this into account, and then we use the MOS. MOS uh, stands for mean opinion score uh, to rate the quality of the speech. And the NC, uh, yeah, uh, uh, 920 is the North America uh, communication standard. Uh, we, th these are the basically the three fundamental standards we're using to build our, uh, to build our test fixtures in our, in our, in our office. And then the, uh, we, we adopt the uh, ITU 501 and 52 uh, standards uh, recommended by ITU for the test signals. It specifies the speech signal, non-speech signal. For the non-speech part, it includes the uh, deterministic signals and also random signal signals. Um, for, for basically all the, the acoustic part test. And then we use basically the, uh, um, if for, for, for our um, 
you know, the, the game uh, communication, uh, we also take into account the background noise. Um, so the ITU 396 um, and the 106 uh, are specified to measure the voice quality in the presence of the background noise. So the, it defines uh, six different categories of the noise, uh, from street noise, car noise, office noise, uh, restaurant noise. Um, so we, we measure our performance, in particular noise suppression uh, performance uh, in different kinds of noise. And the, uh, um, then coming to the, uh, the subjective and the objective uh, assessment of the sound quality, so we're taking account of the ITU recommendation 800 and 862 and 63. 863 is, is uh, the latest one we call the POCA. Um, to its perceptual objective, uh, blah, 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 test of the, of the, of the sound, uh, speech quality. Um, so these are the standards we basically comply with. And then we purchased uh, the software we call uh, Ocure and the LabCore as uh, hardware from the Head Acoustics. Head Acoustics is, is the, uh, the, the standard uh, sound um, audio device manufacturers in Germany. So we, we built their uh, entire suite uh, of, the, uh, of, the, of the software and the hardware to build the system we have here. Um, that's a uh, picture of our lab. Um, these hats. So this, and always. Oh, by the way, also uh, purchased network network sim emulator uh, to simulate the different network conditions, different delay, different um, bandwidth, um, different packet loss, blah blah blah, to 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 cover the different network conditions we, we may run into in the in the real world. So um, that's a very uh, a quick summary, a, a quick demonstration of our results. Um, against um, some competitors on the market. Um, so uh, we're pretty, we pretty, uh, we pretty happy, we're pretty uh, proud of our uh, GME uh, voice quality performance. Um, taking a look at like the uh, two direction delay, uh, we are 300. That's a, that's a test we've done across the, across the Pacific Ocean. Um, we are 300 milliseconds less than our competitor. Uh, and then speaking of the loudness, because the loudness part is a very important uh, uh, matrix in our test. Um, our sending pass, because communication has two parts, sending part and receiving part. Our sending part quality is, is, is pretty good. You look at the MOS. MOS is the, as I said, MOS is the uh, indication um, of the sound quality, um, um, which scales from one to five. So our, our, our school, we score pretty high on the sending pass, uh, and we score, um, Comparatively with our competitors on the receiving part, uh, we do basically the echo cancellation, noise suppression, AGC, all these uh, ergs on the on the primary on the sending parts. And uh, uh, the the next important one is about the echo cancellation. So uh, our echo can canceller also performs quite well because we use not just the linear prediction, we also use the nonlinear prediction to uh, suppress the residual uh, residual uh, echo. Um, and starting from last year, we use AI, um, uh, we use our deep, deep learning based techniques to further suppress the res residual echo, because the residual echo still sounds like, the, sounds like the speech. It's not the real speech, but it sounds like a speech. Using the traditional you know, signal processing um, techniques, it's very difficult to remove the residual echo. But using the, the, some AI uh, techniques, you deep learning trend, we can make it even less. So our, our echo cancellation performs better and very stable compared with our. Uh, our uh, competitors on this market. And uh, um, the next big thing is about a double talk. Double talk is a, could be a very tricky problem in the communication, uh, in particular, uh, as I said, if it, in particular if the, if the delay is pretty long. So here you can see, uh, and in ITU standards, uh, for the echo, for the double talk uh, uh, test, uh, it, 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 it creates eight different categories from class A to class G um, to rate the, the uh, double talk uh, performance. So uh, class A is the best. It means basically uh, the, the, the near end, uh, the near end speech could be delivered to the far end without any distortion, without um, severe impairments. So you can see our, 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 our double talk performance uh, is really great. Well, most, of our, most, of our, most of the suites fall into the class, uh, class A and the class two. That means we preserve most of the near end talk when the far end speech is delivered. And uh, our competitors basically drops all these, uh, all the drops all the syllables, drops all the words, and you can you can hardly hear what the near end speaker is talking when the far end speech comes over. And uh, uh, that part is about the noise reduction. So noise reduction, as I said, there are six different categories we use uh, to uh, to assess the performance of our noise reduction. So. Uh, 
Um, so our noise, uh, our noise suppression strategy is slightly different because um, the uh, from uh, in the ITU standard they have uh, two different uh, two different categories. One is to look at your noise uh, suppression performance uh, using the they call it uh, that G means global MOS. That N is noise MOS. That means how your algorithm is performing against the noise. And that speech that S is speech speech MOS means how your algorithm preserves. The speech, because if you remove the noise, you hope you can keep the, the speech as, as much as possible. So we take a pretty aggressive approach to suppress noise, because we think that noise is going to be very annoying. Um, so you see our noise uh, scores pretty high um, um, against our competitors. But we do suffer a little bit on that speech noise part. So um, in particular, when the noise, uh, when the noise is pretty, is pretty annoying, it's pretty, it's pretty loud, uh, we, we, we tend to suppress more noise than preserve the, the speech. Um, and, and that means our, but in general, our, our global MOS um, is still comparable uh, with, our, with our competitors. That's the a, that's a, uh, details of our test results. Um, that's how, uh, as I said, that's how uh, our solution uh, performs against the, the very bad network conditions. Uh, the network, um, said the real uh, IP network could have very severe packet loss, uh, network jitter, uh, and also the and also the delay. So uh, from the score, we uh, we basically use um, we use ARQ, we use FEC, you know, to to to, to make sure um, uh, the our, our solution could still. Could still work pretty well in a very bad network condition, uh, and you can see at the expense of very very marginal uh, bit rate increase. Uh, when we increase the bit, when we bit rate increase, uh, when bit rate increase like 30, 50 percent from 76 to uh, 105, we can resist uh, 30 percent or even 50 percent net network packet loss. And our jitter, and, and we can also our our MOS, uh, our our score, MOS score is still pretty high, uh, where the network latency is pretty is, could be as high as 600 milliseconds. So in the ITU standard, 600 is defined according to in the ITU standard, the sending pass and the receiving pass latency cannot exceed 200 milliseconds, and the transport and the um, the propagation. Uh, Propagation uh, latency from U.S. to China across uh, across the Pacific Ocean is about 200 milliseconds. So, if your solution is really uh, matching the, the ITU standards, using 600 uh, milliseconds should be test uh, to see how your how it performs. So that's how we uh, that's how we do uh, do um, assess our performance in the in the very could be very adverse network conditions. And we have uh, pretty. Um, I would say pretty small, like CPU and memory footprint usage in our one, in our solution. Um, yeah, uh, and uh, now we come to the advantages of our joint solution uh, with Wise. Um, as I just explained, the uh, uh, in our in our collaboration with Wise, uh, in our collaboration with Wise, we can provide an improved uh, gaming voice experience. It really so because in the past, um, the GME, the uh, voice chat, uh, voice channel, and the voice audio channel, they are separated. And when they are separated, you are running into problems with doing the switch or, or doing the, the 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 merging of different sounds uh, eventually. So, but now with our joint solution, all these problems are gone. And uh, we can have the immersive voice chat um, because now you can take uh, the, uh, the different factors like distance, like 3D positioning, or into consideration when you design how you communicate with, your, with, with other players. And it's easy integration. Uh, now with our integration uh, into the WISE engine, uh, it just takes lines of code, like four lines of code to integrate our, our GME into, into your games. And the voice modification here means that uh, by taking advantage of the different DSP effects uh, from the voice, uh, you can change the, 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 really the sound of the voice. So that's different from the, uh, the, the voice conversion I just uh, explained. But that's how you can make your sound, like make your sound still different, but it still sounds like you. Um, yeah, as I explained, our solution is cross-platform. Uh, it already has this. Uh, it, uh, the, 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 the major popular uh, the Windows, iOS, Android platforms um, to support, and uh, the, uh, the, um, the PlayStation, um, PlayStation and Xbox uh, is on a test now, and a Switch uh, will be available in just one or two months. And then the, we also have the Unity and the Unreal um, engine support um, pretty shortly in a few months. So uh, yes, you may have the concern because the uh, the the uh, in, in the really in the in-game voice chat, um, the the 
the, the voice communication, real-time voice communication itself is pretty secure. So uh, in our uh, Tencent cloud server or we call with our partner cloud, we don't preserve any data. It's, it's a real-time, it's like a make, you make a call with others, right? There's no point in saving any data for further processing. So, um, but a tricky point here is about a voice message. Uh, we, hear the, we hear the demands from the gaming users to use a voice message, but a voice message comes with a concern of the GDPR compliant, because your data has to be stored somewhere for further delivery. So that's the part we are working with our, our, our legal and the compliance team um, to, to find the solution. We are going through the very strict uh, legal and the compliance process to get it done. And the Tencent Cloud itself, so our solution today is based, based on Tencent Cloud, uh, it's primarily in the Asia area. Tencent Cloud uh, uh, itself is already uh, GDPR compliant. We passed that certification. And GME today, as I said, is, is working through that process. And we, uh, we, we, we estimated the, uh, the, the, that process, uh, we could go through it by the end of this year. Um, yeah, uh, and uh, uh, one concern we hear from the gaming developer is about the, their privacy. Uh, for example, that the, uh, the players may have the concerns if, I, if I'm using a GMA service, uh, would you store, would you, uh, would you detect, would you store, would you check my IP address or any of my personal information? So, uh, so I'm here to tell you actually that you don't really need to have that concern because our GME, we, we, we interact with the games. So GME only has the knowledge about the GME voice user ID. So that voice user ID is generated by the games from the game player ID. So game players interact with the games. Games create the game voice ID from the uh, game voice user ID from the uh, from the game ID. So GME has no knowledge about this part. It doesn't know who is using it, where, where the game player comes from. It only captures the game's user ID. And then it builds the, uh, the Tencent call through the SDK APB ID. So SDK APB ID is a general name, and the SDK APB ID is actually um, uh, created and maintained by the WISE, by the audio kinetic. So, so we really don't know anything, up, any in particular concrete or personal information about the game players. Um, yeah, that's, the, uh, that's our service availability uh, across the globe. So, um, so GME itself uh, is independent of the cloud, cloud provider. Uh, we leverage uh, Tencent Cloud because, just because today we primarily run our business in Asia. Uh, but we also partner with Google Cloud uh, worldwide. So uh, these are the service, uh, the, the, the blue lines, the blue cities are the, are the services offered by Tencent Cloud. And uh, for other cities, for in particular for, you know, for, the, for the green ones, uh, we partner with Google Cloud uh, to offer this service to the, to the game players. And then we actually, in the, for example, if in North America or in, the, in, the, in, the, in the Europe, um, we, um, if we see, the, if we see the, the spike of the demand, we, will, we, we, we can scale our service pretty easily. It's just add more servers. We have got servers um, in our store. We can just add more servers in, just in a few days. We should be able to scale, scale up our availability and our bandwidth to meet the growing demands. Um, so that's, uh, that's uh, and also the, uh, the, as other cloud providers, we offer the 7, um, 24 seven support uh, to all the game developers and the game players. Because these are the partners, these are the gaming, gaming companies uh, we are working with today um, to, to offer the gaming service. And uh, that's, these are the games basically that we have uh, already uh, enabled the GME service, and these are the games running on the market today. All right, thank you. That's my presentation. Thank you. Yeah.